जी एस पेपर वन जोग्राफी सेक्शन क्वेश्चन नंबर फिफ्टीन विच रीड्स आइडेंटिफाई एंड डिस्कस द फैक्टर्स रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर डाइवर्सिटी ऑफ नेचुरल वेजिटेशन इन इंडिया एस एस द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरीज इन रेन फॉरेस्ट रीजन ऑफ इंडिया नाउ दिस क्वेश्चन कैरीड फिफ्टीन मार्क्स हैज टू बी रिटर्न इन द वर्ल्ड लिमिट ऑफ टू हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी वर्ड्स सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स ट्राई टू आइडेंटिफाई the demand of the question two parts again in which the first part which is identify and discuss the factors responsible for diversity of natural vegetation why natural vegetation is so diverse in india and second part primarily focus on wildlife sanctuaries very specific here to the rain forest regions of india so first part if we want to understand the first part which is the diversity in terms of natural vegetation this diversity in the terms of uh, natural vegetation primarily is uh, due to climate because vegetation is direct manifestation of climate of any region and so when we talk about climate over here climate would be comprising of two components that is temperature and would be com comprising of precipitation so temperature and precipitation these are two components over here so in our answer what we have to do is we will provide the idea about the diversity in terms of temperature and we will provide the idea about diversity in terms of precipitation so very clearly now we know that in india the temp based on temperature i can divide india into the tropical zone and the subtropical zone the subtropical zone here would be including the himalayan section also so we'll put over here these two information along with that we'll provide some example of the vegetation also the similar pattern we are going to focus uh, uh, we are going to adopt under precipitation also in which high precipitation region low precipitation region we know india is uh, characterized by very high levels of spatial variations of precipitation okay on one hand you can get the rainfall of 300 350 cm at the same time you can get the rainfall in certain areas which are would be less than 25 cm also and so these regions are going to show some typical characteristics in terms of their vegetation again so in this uh, part again we are going to identify those areas very briefly and associate with them some specific type of natural vegetation and so this would be the first part done so in this case now when we talk about this first part just directly starting with the introduction part you can see that what are we writing is the rich array of uh, natural vegetation over here that's the first part okay so the rich array of natural vegetation and it is a direct manifestation of diverse climatic condition this is what we have started with our whole idea and now we are writing this in terms of variation in temperature and precipitation which shape the ecological landscape of the country so this is the introduction part that can be written after the introduction now let's move on to the body part of the answer and in this case the first i told you we are going to talk about the factors responsible for diversity of natural vegetation i have divided it into primarily basically a broad category that is climate and under that we are talking talking about temperature we are talking about rainfall and so as you can see first starting with the climate broadly we have written it is intrinsically related linked to climate of a region temperature precipitation and now under that the pointers that is first and second pointer first pointer temperature zones as discussed we have written over here tropical and subtropical regions and then we have given examples uh, say for example now just based on the temperature a very good example can be the dry evergreen forests which are found so these dry evergreen forests are found uh, in a precipitation range of around 100 cm and there are two regions in india where basically we will find this type of vegetation but yet given the temperature conditions the vegetation differs over there take for instance when we talk about tamil nadu in tamil nadu the dry evergreen forest that we find okay these are called as tropical dry evergreen forest and a important species over here is a tamarind 
on the other hand when you talk about western himalayas they also have the dry evergreen forest but we call them as subtropical dry evergreen rather than tropical subtropical dry evergreen and so these are colder variations of the dry evergreen forest found over here and hence very clearly manifested in terms of important species which now found over here is olives so this would be found up to 1000 meters altitude in the western himalayas so can be seen temperature zones although precipitation remains same over here precipitation conditions are same but yet given tropical and subtropical location you have tropical dry evergreen you have subtropical dry Similarly, rainfall variations when we talk about, we have taken the example uh, in terms of two different extremes. First, say for example, I have put over here Rajasthan. Okay, in the western parts of Rajasthan, we are going to get the rainfall of around 50 centimeters, less than 50 also. And so in those cases, we find the thorn vegetation, tropical thorn vegetations in this area. On the other extreme I have taken is northeastern region. Northeastern region, especially if you see the areas of Sikkim, the Arunachal Pradesh, or Meghalaya, Mizoram, Tripura, these are the regions which are going to receive rainfall of around 300 centimeters, more than 250 in any case. And so you are going to get over here the tropical wet evergreen forest. So we can see two extremes here we have given, plus in addition to that, we can give some numbers related to the rainfall also over here. Wherein I can say in Rajasthan somewhere around 50 centimeters because within itself there would be variation. I'll write in this particular case greater than 250 centimeters. So this is what we can provide the numbers with and provide the vegetation type. So this is the first part of the answer that is factors responsible for diversity of natural vegetation. After that the second part which is the role of wildlife sanctuaries. For this what we have done first very briefly we have written where are rainforests found, okay why there is a need for their conservation because that's when we will move to their conservation aspect with respect to wildlife sanctuaries. So when we see rainforest and their significance first we are saying it they are look, uh, spread across western Ghats you will find over there, northeast India region you will find Andaman and Nicobar. These are the areas where we find the tropical rainforests. And now we have said they are biodiversity hotspots because they have very high levels of biodiversity as well as they have lost a good proportion, a major portion of their endemic vegetation, endemic species. And so biodiversity hotspots and why the destruction? Destruction we have written, urbanization, mining, agriculture, these are the different reasons, probable reasons for the destruction. So once we have established the idea that why rainforests are facing threat, then only we are going to move towards the uh, role of wildlife sanctuaries in the conservation of these rainforests. And so this was the demand of the question, straightforward. And so when we say role of wildlife sanctuaries, what are they going to do is uh, the basic role that any protected area uh, will be having that would be protection of flora and fauna but more importantly they separate the human habitation from these protected area the uh, floral or faunal regions which are endangered or which are facing threat and so acts as a buffer against deforestation and other anthropogenic activities which may lead to uh, further degradation or destruction of these rainforests. And here we have provided an example that is the Silent Valley uh, in Kerala. So the Silent Valley National Park, this uh, provides a case study to us, okay, how earlier it was facing a major level of threats, but later with the declaration of it as National Park, okay, now the, it has uh, regained the uh, flora or faunal diversity. Lastly, because we are, we are going to assess the uh, or examine the role, okay, one very, br very briefly one point we, are, we have put over here that is in the form of counter arguments to the wildlife sanctuaries also. 
which primarily is where the alienation of people from their native forest has taken place because these people have traditionally lived in these forests okay their life was in perfect sync with the forest but yet with the declaration of these wildlife sanctuaries these people have been displaced and so the natural link which was there between these native population and the flora or fauna of that region and their efforts in the conservation the traditional ways of conservation okay that is something what has been disturbed and that has led to alienation of these people from their forest which in which they traditionally live so this is where we end this uh, role of wildlife sanctuaries we have put four positive points over here briefly okay not uh, too much focusing on the negative aspect just briefly telling the counter argument to the wildlife sanctuary and lastly the conclusion part is just nothing but the summarization where two parts we have taken in conclusion also okay so this is a summarizing conclusion and here we are saying the vegetation is due to varied climatic conditions okay then we have said challenges are there and then we have said wildlife sanctuaries hold promise so you can see in this type of a summarizing conclusion okay what we have done is the three parts that we have dealt with in our answer all of that we have now summarized in the conclusion itself